I think I do have a creative ability in thinking about science, uh, which is different from explaining science in a journal like Nature. It's the poetry of science that, that I try to communicate. As we were chatting earlier, you mentioned you hadn't been to the sort of very high Arctic before. Yes, I've been to Greenland, not as high as this, and I've been to Antarctica twice, but never quite as many degrees <laughs> away from the equator as now. Yeah, 81. What's been your sort of favorite part? I suppose the Guillemot colony, um, which was sensational. It was stunning. Yes, just watching them skimming along above the, above the water. Yeah, I just wonder if there's any behavior that we see animals do that we think might just be for the joy of it. It is tempting to think that. On the other hand, an animal that wasted time and energy having fun would likely not survive so well as an animal that concentrated on surviving, unless the having fun does serve as practice in young birds practicing flying and that sort of thing. You made an interesting comment that humans are sort of past the basics of natural selection, that, that we're intelligent yes. enough to be past it. Whenever I give a talk, people ask me questions about humans. And, well, and, of course. And it's a shame because you don't really get to understand much about humans as an evolutionist. You have to, you have to move away from that in order to understand humans, and, which is interesting. But there's not much point in asking an evolutionist about humans because humans have, have to some extent, to a fairly large extent, it, emancipated themselves from it. So it's not that humans have graduated, it's just that there's more happening. Well, it sort of is that they sort of have it away. I mean, we, you could say that evolution is, has given us the big brains that enable us to do things like poetry and philosophy. But if you try to say, what is the survival value of doing philosophy, you won't get a very coherent or sensible answer. Right. Can you tell me a bit about your new upcoming book? It's provisionally called Tales from Heckel, which it, that's unlikely to remain the title, it's not a very sexy title. A while ago I wrote a book together with Yan Wong um, called The Ancestor's Tale, which was about evolutionary history looking backwards as a sort of Chaucer Canterbury Tales uh, enterprise. Really my new book is just an, a new set of tales, but instead of being based upon the Chaucerian pilgrimage to the past, they're based upon Ernst Haeckel's pictures. Ernst Haeckel was a great German biologist. He was Darwin's major disciple in Germany, I suppose, but he was also a, a consummate artist. And he painted and drew beautiful pictures, often of planktonic organisms. He did monographs on radiolaria, on, on siphonophores, on lots of different, different creatures. He, did, he discovered and named a very large number of species and drew them exquisitely. And so m my book is taking one picture after another from Heckel's book, Art Forms in Nature, and then expanding on the picture, I mean, talking about the animal concerned. So it's, uh, it so it sounds sort of like a, like a grown-up educational picture book? Sort of. I mean, it, 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 the, the pictures just occupy the, f the front of each chapter. Mm -hmm. and it's then, the jumping off point. Yes, the jumping off point. There have been studies on, on people who win Nobel Prizes and such that say that their creative pursuits increase the likelihood. And do you have any particular, aside from obviously writing books, any particular creative pursuits that, that you feel inspire you or, or put you in, in the zone, so to speak? I like music and uh, I play in an amateur sort of way. I do think that, for example, my book, The Extended Phenotype, does have a creative part to it. It does have something of a sort of poetic vision of science, which is different from just reporting on scientific facts. Right. There's there's certainly an element of sort of creative prose. I, I, I like to think so. Having the imagination to see connections uh, which are not necessarily obvious. Mm -hmm. And to tell it as a story rather yes. than just a list of facts. Yes. Which can be quite hard. Yes. And I wonder what your thoughts on your methods are on communicating these sort of high level concepts. In writing my books, I imagine it's being read by various people. So I um, will read it probably hundreds of times. It's not too much of an exaggeration to say each time I'm probably subconsciously imagining a different person reading it. The prose 
is therefore subject to a kind of not natural selection of imaginary readers. You know, I, li I like to arouse people's imagination and also not to stress the usefulness necessarily. I mean, of course, science is useful, but that's not why I think it's exciting. Right. I try to sat satirize it sometimes by saying that, it'd be like saying that the advantage of music is it's good exercise for the violinist's right arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly. And I think, I think a lot of mathematicians would agree with that as yes. well. Uh, yes, they would. They, they talk quite a lot about the beauty and elegance yes. um, of math rather than you can do your taxes with it. Quite. <laughs> yes. It's the poetry of science that, that I try to communicate, which I think is, is what Carl Sagan did. Yes, and, and, and reading Carl Sagan's books is sort of why I went into it. So, yes, I can I'm imagine. I'm sure you've heard many yes. very similar stories yes. yeah. of people reading your books. And I think that's what we try to do in New Scientist as well. Is, is yes, sort of I think that's right. So you mentioned Carl Sagan. What other figures, obviously Darwin, but what other yes, figures inspire Darwin, you? Yes, Darwin certainly. I find that science fiction, good science fiction, can um, make me think about science. So um, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, Fred Hoyle, although it's fiction, it makes me think about science. And I think I've learned some science, actually, from, from reading science fiction. I, I do that all the time. Well, thank you so much for, for chatting with me in this it's a pleasure. Thank it's you very, very much. It's a very strange yes, dome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>